What up, what up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today on Fitness Tech Reviews, we're gonna see if the Verse of 4 is something that is right for you. In this video, I'm gonna go over the things I like about the Verse of 4. I'm gonna go over the middling things that aren't too great, but aren't too bad. And I'm gonna go over the things I really didn't like about the Verse of 4. But at the end of the day, is it right for you? Let's go ahead and get right into it. One of the first things I liked about it is gonna be the screen. It is a 1.58 inch AMOLED display that has always on capabilities. The design itself is 10% thinner and 15% lighter than the Versa 3. It comes in aluminum in a graphite, platinum and copper rose. It has a physical button on the side that is customizable. It felt like it was pretty easy to click on, which was great, and it made it a little bit easier to go through the user interface. We'll get into that in a little bit. They also say about 80% of it was recycled. I'm not sure about that, but it also does have five atmospheres of water resistance. So if you want to go with a little bit of swim tracking, you do that as well. It says it comes with six days of battery life. I'm pretty sure if you weren't doing any workouts, weren't using any GPS or turning off some features, you'll probably get that six days. But if you have your always on display, that's probably going to cut you down to about four and a half to five days. And if you're working out at least one time a day, you're probably going to be closer to that four day margin. But it does take two hours to fully charge. So that's not a bad deal. And it also comes with a magnetic charger that sticks on relatively easily that makes charging pretty convenient. It does come in with a built in GPS, which is great. And it also does come with high and low heart rate notifications. So if you're somebody that needs those notifications, if your heart's getting too low or too high, that's built into the device. One of my favorite things about bands in general is reminders to move and that's built into the app and band itself as well with even some mindfulness things. We'll get into the mindfulness and the premium Fitbit app a little bit later in the video. It has great sleep tracking. Fitbit predominantly has been one of the more accurate sleep trackers among fitness devices, and this is no different. It will check your different sleep stages, deep, light, REM, and stuff like that. It'll give you a sleep score, and if you do have the Fitbit Premium, it'll also give you a sleep profile as well. That sleep profile is gonna give you little ideas to help you with your sleep. But it does have SpO2 tracking to check out your blood oxygen levels, and it has pretty decent fitness tracking. It isn't top of the line as far as fitness tracking is concern. If you're going with steady state cardio, cycling, biking, or running or anything like that, it's going to be pretty accurate. But if you're doing more high intensity like sprints, it is going to lag behind a little bit. But that is typical with any optical heart rate sensor. It has active zone minutes and even a cardio fitness score to help gamify your fitness a little bit. Some people really enjoy that. And it has a lot of different fitness tracking that is automatically tracked like running, biking, and stuff like that. And of course, it tracks your steps, your calories burned, and it even tracks floors climbed. Since it is built in with Google, it does have quick pairing with Android devices. It is also available on iOS, but a couple things aren't on iOS. Like quick replies, you can do quick replies on the band itself, but you cannot do that on iOS devices. You can also use the built-in microphone to reply as well, which is a big plus, but you will not be able to do that on Apple. It also has Find My Phone, but with Find My Phone, it's not built into the actual band. You have to find the app itself and download it to the band. Uh, that took me a little bit to learn. Hopefully you're getting a lot of great information from this video. If you are, please smash that like button. It's gonna help push it out to the YouTube algorithm to show it to more people to help me grow my channel. A couple of the middling things, not too good, not too bad things, are the band itself. The band is great and it's easily replaceable. I was surprised by how easy it was, but you could not use your old Versa 3, which is relatively disappointing. It also has a good amount of Google apps like Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Pay, but they are not currently on the device, which is disappointing. Things like the Galaxy Watch 4 said it was going to be coming out with Google Assistant and Google Pay, but it took a solid nine, 10 months for it to actually be implemented. I hope it's not gonna take that long with the Versa or the Sense, but there's no real way to know. Another middling thing is the built-in microphone and speaker. I love that it has a microphone, you can quick reply, 
but you cannot take phone calls on your band right now. They say it will be coming in within an update, but right now I still haven't seen anything about it. The Fitbit Premium. So this is not too great and not too bad, mostly because you do get six months of premium for free, but after that you will have to pay either $10 a month or $80 yearly to continue with that. Things like readiness score. It is pretty darn accurate. Heart rate variability is accurate on the band, but you can only get that in premium. Your sleep score, you will be able to get your sleep score, but things like your sleep profile will be behind that paywall. So I'm apparently a tortoise this last month, but it gives me a lot of great information to go through, but you do need premium to have that. And health metrics. This also just comes with the premium. You can check trends for your breathing rate, your heart rate variability for 30 and 90 days but if you do not have premium you can only do seven days which is relatively disappointing but the positives with premium so when you go over to the premium it tells you everything that you do get with it mindfulness sessions video workouts when you click on things like video workouts has a bunch of things like you got a cycling workout here standing abs all-star baseball workouts. I mean, there's a plethora of stuff in here, especially with mindfulness sessions. This is probably one of my favorite things to help with stress, but it is behind that premium paywall. As you can see that bottom left premium, there are some free ones, but they're very minute. The app overall, I am a big fan of. It kind of simplifies a lot of the things built in. Uh, so you can check quick things on the actual app and you can even log your food. So that is a plus. Now the things that I really didn't like about the band. It really didn't seem like it improved much from the previous Versa 3, which is relatively disappointing. And it took away the ability for third-party apps. So when you jump into the apps, it won't be able to put in things like Pandora, Spotify, the uh, Starbucks app that you were able to do on previous Versus and Sense bands. But I don't know why they took away that third party ability. Maybe it will improve upon in an update, but right now there is no third party integration. Also, for some reason, there is no music control on the actual band itself. That is a very simple app that should have been put on. I really think it will be coming on shortly, but right now there is no music control on the band. You can't answer phone calls on the band, even though it has a speaker and it has a microphone. I don't know why it's not currently on the band. It just seems like a lot of these things should have been on the band when it got released, hopefully within an update, but there's no promise for any of these things or when they will come out. So at $230, is it really worth it? Or should you just get the Versa 3? I am seeing right now on Amazon, the Fitbit Versa 3 is going for $160. That is a solid $70 savings from the $230 for the Versa 4. Yes, you do get a little bit more of a sleek user interface and it's a little bit thinner, a little bit lighter, and of course it's going to have the Google integration, but right now it does not. And I'm still not the biggest fan of a lot of things that are put behind that premium paywall like readiness score, like being able to see trends longer than seven days and viewing a couple health metrics. I just feel like a lot of these things shouldn't be behind the premium paywall. Yes, there is a lot of great stuff like workouts, like recipes and stuff like that that you do get for your money, but I don't feel like you should be having to get premium to get the full functions out of your watch. The Sense 2 is $300, where the Versa 4 is $230, so that's $70 extra. You do get an EDA scanner and a continuous EDA scanner nonetheless, so it'll continually track your stress levels. So if that is something that is important to you, maybe the Sense 2 is where it should go, but it also has an ECG. So if you wanna check out if you have AFib or any irregular heartbeats, that is where you'd go with the Sense 2. But overall, in general, I'd probably recommend the majority of you guys just get the Versa 3 if you're looking between all of them. Hopefully when there is an update, I will update you guys. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell when that video comes out. I am gonna be doing a full comparison also on the Versa 4 and the Sense 2. So make sure to stay subscribed for that as well. And if you do want to purchase any of the bands that I talked about in this video, I'll be linking them all down below. That's going to shoot at Amazon. If you purchase from there, a little bit of that purchase is going to help me grow my channel. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, please smash that like button. It's going to help push it out to YouTube algorithm to help me grow my channel. But as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and above all, stay positive. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.